Hi, in today's video we speak about how to register your VET ID retrospectively or what to do if you should have been registered for VAT in the past. In the next 15 minutes we talk about the topic of what is backdating. We make a little recap on when to get registered for a VET ID in a given country. The step-by-step -step process to correcting the mistake and how to reclaim VAT that you have or might have paid already in your home country incorrect or the risks and consequences of not registering retrospectively. What is backdating? Backdating in general describes the process to register a VAT number, a VAT ID retrospectively. In many, many cases, it happens to us on a day-to-day -day basis that sellers are coming to us and telling us, hey, for some reason I have been storing in a certain country or I have exceeded my threshold limit in a country. I didn't know about it, I wasn't aware of it, or maybe I have been aware of it, but I wasn't aware of the consequences of it, that I should have been registered for a VET ID since a year, two years, three years, or even five years already. Now we have to solve this problem as we need to clear the past in order to make sure to avoid penalties and, and further consequences. First of all, we need to do a little recap on what are actually the two reasons why you have to be registered for a VAT number and from when on. The first reason is the distance selling threshold limit. So if you reach a certain sales limit within a given time, within a year, then you need to be registered from that moment you exceed that limit. On the other hand, if you're storing in a country, you also have to be registered immediately from the first day of storage. Here a little graphic about this topic as well. So the threshold limit in Germany, B2C sales within one year to German customers, to German end consumers, is at 100,000 euros. So if, like in this example, you're selling more than 100,000 euros, 60,000 euros from France, 60,000 euros from Spain, and you're selling over 100,000 euros, you have exceeded the threshold limit. From that moment you have exceeded the threshold limit, you need to be registered or you need to get registered for a VAT ID in Germany. At the same end, which when it comes to storage, it is a similar picture. If you're storing in a given country, by either using a third-party service like Amazon FBA or storing yourself with any other provider or even having your own warehouse, you need to be registered in that country from the very first day of storage. So from the moment the first unit of goods is arriving at this given warehouse. So let's quickly summarize. You must backdate a VAT number if you have stored goods already in a certain country or if you have exceeded the distance selling threshold limit. If that happened in the past already, it basically means we need to resolve this past situation of not being registered and we need to backdate your VAT number from that date you should have been registered already in the past. How that works in detail is what we are going to, to, to look at in the next minutes. And backdating basically describes exactly that process. It is a longer process that starts with registering the number and really resolving what you may have paid incorrectly to the wrong country. So what would be the step to get registered if you have realized, oh, I have been storing, I have been exceeding a threshold limit in the past. First of all, you need to know the validity date. So you need to know that date when you have exceeded the threshold limit or the date when you have been storing in that given country. How to figure out that date? Either you just take a look at your sales data, get the help of an accountant or just sign up to our free software and let our software determine the date of storage and the date of exceeding a threshold limit. Once you know the date, you also need to have a proof of this validity date. What could be a proof? A proof can be things like an invoice, 
a storage pr um, pro forma invoice or any other kind of proof that confirms the validity date. So that confirms, okay, yes, I have been storing from that given day. This was the first day the goods have been stored in that country. Why is this important? Because governments, they do require some kind of legally binding information that shows to them, okay, that's your validity date. This is what they ask for during the VAT registration process. Once you're sure about the date, you, at the, first, the first thing you need to do in those given countries is you need to register for a VAT ID. The process of registering that VAT ID backdated is not different from the process of regularly registering a VAT ID in the future. So you have to submit your paperwork, you have to show them that proof of validity date with that past date, and you have to submit all of that paperwork in a translated form, um, depending on the country, to each and every government. This process, it differs from country to country. It can take between four to eight weeks from the day of submitting the paperwork. In that time, while waiting to actually receive the VAT ID, you can only prepare by informing your home country's tax authorities about the mistake you have done. What is this mistake all about? As it happens that you haven't been aware about storing in that country or you, you, know, you ignored the fact that you, have, you should have been registered for that country, it may mean that you have paid your VAT incorrectly to your home country instead of to the other countries where the VAT would belong to actually. At the same end, you might have created incorrect VAT returns or incorrect invoices in your invoicing tool. This is something that needs to be solved and depending on your individual situation, your home country's tax authority or any other kind of tax authority that is affected by this mistake needs to be informed. Why do you need to inform them? Because if you have a big, big change of VAT liability and you want to reclaim that VAT in your home country, which is what we're going to talk about, how to do that, um, obviously tax authorities are asking themselves, hey, what's the reason for this case? What's the situation? So by instead of just waiting until they get back to you, it makes much more sense to actually contact them. This is something you can coordinate with your home country's accountant as well as with the accountants in those countries you're getting registered in. Once you receive your VET ID, you can basically really start the process of solving the past. Your VET ID in this case will have a validity date with that backdated date. So your VET ID, once you receive it, you will see on the VET certificate that it is valid from the time you have exceeded that threshold limit or the date you have been storing in that given country. This now allows you, let's look at the next parts, the next side of this, the process. This now allows you to correct the invoices you have been created, you have created incorrectly. And it also allows you to submit all of the VAT returns that you should have been submitting over the time in all those given countries you now have been registered. At the same end, you then have to make sure that all the VAT that you may have paid to the wrong country, maybe to your home country, maybe to another country, that this will be reclaimed. Otherwise, you will have to pay VAT twice on one hand to your home country and on the other hand to the country the VAT actually belongs to, so the new country you just got registered in. Very important here, you have to take a look at the deadlines of each and every country of reclaiming the VAT. What are those deadlines about? So every country has different rules and regulations about reclaiming incorrectly paid VAT. That means there might be countries that have a certain deadline that say, okay, if after five years you try to reclaim something back from five years, it is not possible anymore. This would put you at a high risk of really paying VAT twice. VAT that you only earned once 
you only collected ones from your customers, you, in this case, you would have to pay to two different countries. That's why it's really important to coordinate with that tax authority in your home country, in that country you have paid the VAT to, to make sure that you really are able to reclaim the VAT that you have paid and then actually pay it to the country where it would really belong to. At the same end, you need to provide to both tax authorities supporting documents explaining them why you are now regularly um, filing all the VAT returns that should have been filed in the past and at the same end why you are now editing, you are now changing a VAT return that you may have submitted already in your home country. This is very important in the case of coordinating with tax authorities as during a tax audit and in any other situation it is possible to solve the past but only if all parties are really involved in this process. One of the very big questions that we always get is what if I don't register my VAT ID because all of what we just spoke about it sounds really complex it's a lot of work it costs me a lot of administrative money it, it's something that maybe I just don't do it maybe I just get registered from today's date and behave as if I would have been stored from today onwards or if I have exceeded my threshold limit today the first time here we always have to reply one thing in the past this may have worked why? It was illegal back then as well, but it may have worked because tax authorities, they were not really aware about e-commerce, about the options of storage and everything else. Nowadays, online marketplaces, most marketplaces, they are obliged to submit all of your sales transactions to tax authorities if they request them. And be sure they will request them because it's just a question of time on when the next audit is going to happen. At the same time, as always, you have, you're legally obliged to pay all your past VAT returns as well as all the additional penalties in case of tax authorities discovering this. So what does this mean in total? In total this means it is simply a question of time until tax authorities will figure out, hey, this seller according to his sales data that we got from the tax authorities, should have been registered in the past already. And therefore, it basically means that you then have to pay much, much, much more as you are not actively communicating with tax authorities, informing them about your mistake and trying to solve the situation by yourself. This will mean that you will have to pay all the past VAT returns, all the past VAT that is owned to the other country, as well as additional penalties and you're actually committing a crime, the crime of that fraud, which is not just some small topic, okay? I don't want to scare anyone about this topic. It's really something that at the end of the day, it, it's um, dependent on the tax authority. But overall, I can tell you, if you're now at this situation that you have discovered, you should have been registered. I can only suggest get registered, solve the past and really solve it because then you can continually you can continue your business and you have a stable business and you don't have this always this big risk of how tax authorities they might figure it out sooner or later the question that always arises from the first question is how big is the risk here that tax authorities will figure it out and here once again um, it might have been a small risk in the past because tax authorities are not even communicating with each other. So many countries, they didn't really figure out, okay, exceeding a threshold limit for this, I need to know what are his sales whatsoever, okay? In nowadays, as things are getting more digital, as things are getting more controlled, as tax authorities have understood the size of VAT that they, they, they lose because of such situations, they are now much, much closer to the topic. They are now working closer together with tax authority, um, with marketplaces. And therefore, I can say the risk 
has grown exponentially over time. So this means that if I look into the near future, it can be every seller that this has happened to this seller that you have should have been re getting registered in the past. I can only tell that it will come out. And then tax authorities, they are not just looking at your this year's sales, sales. They will get all the sales data so they know what you have done. And therefore, the penalties, they will just get bigger and bigger again. So if it happened to you that tax authorities or that you have figured out by using our software or in any other way that you should have been registered for a VAT in the past already, get in touch with us and really take action. The worst thing to do is to do nothing and to just think about, okay, time will tell, everything will just disappear magically. This will not happen. Your sales record is always there. Tax authorities, they will figure out about your storage, about your threshold limits. And then there is really a problem. Now you have the chance, you have the opinion, you have the possibility to really solve that problem and to really get it done to have a, a future in front of you that is stable and VAT compliant. Thank you.